Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W. We're continuing our discussion of the horrific and yet very important institution of slavery in the colonies. In the previous lesson, we talked a little bit about the origins of African slavery and its roots in racism. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about why it is that the English ultimately turned to African slavery as their preferred source of labor, as opposed to indentured servitude or another possibility, which we're going to talk about these different types of labor and why it is that African slavery ultimately is preferred by the English. So it's important to remember that in the colonies, land was very plentiful, but labor was very scarce. This is kind of the opposite of the equation back in England. So there are three different sort of options or systems of labor that we see evolve in the New World. One is free labor. One is indentured servitude, which we're going to be discussing extensively in this lecture, and chattel slavery or African slavery. So indentured servants were bound by a master for a fixed number of years. It was a contract which they entered into voluntarily, either because they hoped for opportunity in the Americas or perhaps to pay off debt, whatever the reason might be. In essence, the master agreed to feed and clothe the servant, and at the end of the term, the servant was free. A typical contract was for seven years. Sometimes they could be four years or, or any number, but seven was the most common. So imagine that you are so desperate that you are to reach the Americas or to escape wherever you are. You are willing to put yourself voluntarily into a sort of slavery for seven years. That's indentured servitude. So let's just note some of the differences in these two types of labor. Indenture was temporary. Now granted, seven years is an awfully long time. Those of you who are in college, four years, maybe five, so longer than you are in college, they would be in servitude. But slavery was permanent from birth to death, everything in between. Indenture was not hereditary. Slavery was hereditary. So if you were the child of a slave, this went through the mother. If you were a child of a slave mother, then you were enslaved as well. You should not interpret this to mean that indentured servitude was easy, or in some ways that it was not as harsh as slavery itself. And we're going to talk more about this uh, in the next couple of slides. But indentured servitude could be very harsh, and many indentured servants died before attaining their freedom. In some cases, they might be so abused and mistreated and beaten down that after they reached freedom, they were not able to live much of a life. And in many other cases, after the seven years of servitude, the freed servant would find there just weren't many opportunities for them. And we saw a lot of these different factors when I talked about Bacon's Rebellion in a previous lesson. So you might go back and, and listen to that again. But Bacon's Rebellion kind of brings to light some of these differences. So it's worth keeping in mind that early in their colonial endeavor, the English did not use African slavery at all, and in fact relied on indentured servants. This is true through much of the 1600s until you get to the second half of the 1600s when they start to turn to African slavery. So we're going to talk about why they start to rely more on African slavery, but we can also think a little bit more about the comparisons between the two and what might be some of the advantages of using indentured servants instead of slaves. So think about for indentured servants, they served essentially only for the prime of their lives. You had the indentured servant for as long as the contract indicated, four years or seven years, and then they are free to, as an owner or a master, you don't have to worry about caring for infants, you don't have to worry about caring for the elderly. Indentured servants while they did come from different races, were typically white Europeans and often from England itself. 
So there was not the necessity of dealing with people who might not understand the language or dealing with people that you didn't understand and they didn't understand you. Initially, indentured servants were a cheaper option. Down the road, African slaves became a cheaper option once England took over the slave trade after 1660, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So, if we look on the African slavery side, why might we prefer African slaves as a labor source? Well, again, after England assumed the slave trade, African slaves became a cheaper option. It may be hard to say with real certainty that one or the other were better workers, but the Africans did have some advantages in terms of labor. For the most part, they were accustomed with agricultural labor um, based on where they came from in Africa. They also had a natural resistance to certain diseases like malaria, particularly when we're thinking about the coastal regions of South Carolina and the Carolinas. They had some advantages there. Similarly, they also understood and had knowledge of rice cultivation and how to grow other crops. That's what they grew back in Africa. From the perspective of the owner, they had the advantage of their offspring created more slaves. And eventually, we're going to see the slave trade itself is abolished in the British colonies, and yet slavery itself carries on. And that's because they're naturally reproducing and creating more slaves. And finally, slaves are easy to identify by their color if they were to run away, while indentured servitudes, as I mentioned a moment ago, blended in. You could not distinguish between them. So there are advantages on both sides, and yet we see that the English come to rely on African slavery far more than indentured servitude and almost exclusively at the expense of indentured servitude. So why was that? Well, first of all, we should note that England arrived sort of late in this contest for control of African slavery. Spain and Portugal had made extensive use of African slaves in their colonies for centuries before the English uh, even really engaged in this process. Control of the slave trade also was important and, and becomes a key factor. It started with Portugal, which if you recall some of my early lectures, Portugal was the first European nation in exploring the coast of Africa and thus taking advantage of uh, the opportunity for the slave trade. By the early 17th century, the Dutch had taken control, and then in 1660, the English conquered the Dutch in New Amsterdam and took control of the slave trade at that point. And so it becomes much cheaper for the English to utilize African slaves at that point. I also mentioned Bacon's Rebellion as a turning point. So again, refer back to that lesson. But in the wake of Bacon's Rebellion, there comes to be a much greater incentive to rely on uh, a different source of labor from indentured servants for a lot of the different reasons that we've already talked about. Bacon's Rebellion was a key factor. So finally, all of these reasons lead England to turn increasingly toward using African slaves as opposed to European indentured servants, which leads them into the gruesome, horrific practice of the Middle Passage, the process whereby Africans were taken from their homeland in Africa, shipped across the Atlantic to the New World, and it's that Middle Passage that we will discuss in the next lecture.